Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my first Luke Cage episode video. I'll explain the easter eggs from the first couple of episodes, how all the characters are tied together, but we have reached the wu Tangification of the Marvel Universe. So just careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the first couple of episodes. So the first episode itself, like the actual first episode, drops so much information, ties it to the Marvel Universe. You have like the kids selling the bootleg DVDs of footage of the Avengers during the event that's the same way they talked about it during daredevil season one detective scarf name drops thor's hammer pop talks about those fellas downtown he's talking about the avengers you know i'll say right away you know just after the first couple of episodes this is probably going to be my favorite marvel netflix series after that first season of daredevil daredevil season two was awesome jessica jones creatively was amazing but i feel like the construction of Luke Cage, the way music is used and weaved thematically into the context of the show, is just far superior to the other Netflix series right now. And like we say, music is important to the idea of Luke Cage in the series. Each of the titles of the episodes is the title of a gang star song. So when watching the Netflix Luke Cage playlist, it's almost like you're listening to a Luke Cage album. So think of the series as being constructed the way you would construct a hip-hop album. Now, obviously, we still have Iron Fist, we still have The Punisher, we still have Defenders, and then the next seasons of all these shows. So I think that all the shows will slowly get better as they all start to experiment in their own separate genres. Because, like, even though they have all these things and these Easter eggs tying themselves together, like, you see a lot of Jessica Jones, Daredevil stuff going on here, they all feel very different. So it's going to be really fun to see how they weave all these different types of characters together during Defenders next year. But you also probably notice the music. It's totally amazing. So Cotton Mouse Nightclub is a big location for the series. You kind of jump off there throughout the episode. They weave the performance into the action of each of the episodes. And the creator of the show called this like the Wu-Tangification of the Marvel Universe. It's just like Marvel's first big hip-hop series. But it might sound like you might think that this sounds kind of like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Well, that is because the RZA produced the soundtrack for Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill, which makes you wonder like, ooh, man, if this sounds so awesome, like that Wu-Tang episode 3 hallway fight sequence sounds like this, what is Iron Fist going to sound like? Oh my god. And they've already confirmed pretty much they're doing Heroes for Hire in season 2. One of the best Easter eggs too is at the end of the first couple of episodes where Luke Cage saves the family that owns the Chinese restaurant, then says, I'm not for hire, but I got you. And then in the back of your mind, you're just whispering to yourself, oh, he's not for hire, not till season 2. And you see he has all these money problems. Well, when he meets Danny Rand, he's going to be super rich. He's like an Iron Man type character, just piles and piles of money. So they'll be able to go do their superhero things. They won't have to worry about money like this. But his big Spider-Man, Uncle Ben, great power, great responsibility moment comes with Pop's death. So that's kind of his call to action. When he puts the earbuds in and the Wu-Tang track starts and he just goes to town on all of Cotton Mouth's sashes. I really like the way they use the swear jar, and it's almost like that funny Captain America joke too. Language, ooh sorry that just slipped out. But you can see a lot of familiar things in these first couple of episodes. I mean the hallway fight is obviously the big action set piece, you're just like, oh hell yeah, just destroy all those people. And then Cottonmouth just lighting him up at the end of the third episode. Now I've only seen up to the third episode, so they've been doing flashbacks. I think the actual origin story flashback is in the fourth episode. So I'll talk a little bit more about his actual like origin, the powers, the failed Captain America super soldier serum project when I do my next Luke Cage video. But that, that's basically what his powers are. Like he keeps flashing back to prison. He sees Shades, somebody he ran afoul of when he was in Seagate prison. This is all comic book stuff. So most of these characters are from the Luke Cage comics. So like when he mentions Diamondback, he's another Luke Cage character. Comanche is another Luke Cage character. Like he has that amazing sex scene with Misty Knight. And she's like, dude, you talk in your sleep. What did I say? Comanche, Shades, those are people that he ran afoul of in Seagate prison. Like he got mixed up in really bad stuff, tried to leave it behind. So that's why he flips his shit when he first sees Shades again. He's like, oh, damn it. He's worried about Shades recognizing him and telling everybody. So like he's trying to stay on the DL. That's the whole point of the first couple of episodes. He gets to the point where he just can't sit down anymore. He has to move forward. Always moving forward, Pops. So I definitely feel a lot more connected to Luke Cage emotionally, and I think that has a lot to do with the way they're using music 
in the performances, which are all just amazing across the board. I haven't seen a single actor's performance all the way from the main characters down to like the really small supporting characters that I have not liked yet. Now, there are a lot of despicable people like Detective Scarf, but they have such amazing performances that it's like watching Ramsey Bolton on Game of Thrones. Like, he's a terrible person. You definitely want him to die in some spectacular way, but it's so much fun to watch him be bad in episodes. So what about the rest of the Marvel Universe inside here? They name drop Kingpin. Obviously, he has the barber shop that he's trying to save. Like, after Pop dies, they tried to save the barber shop. I haven't seen past the third episode, so it does seem like he will get the barber shop back. And I'm wondering, you know, because Iron Fist in his trailer, he has that crazy beard. I'm wondering if he wanders into Luke Cage's barber shop asking for a haircut, and that's how they meet. Like, oh, dude, where you been? Oh, man, I got a story to tell. And then, bam, it just, like, slams to black, and you go to the Iron Fist series next spring. But we'll see about that when we get here. And please be careful about posting spoilers for future episodes in the comments. Like, obviously, we know what Luke Cage's origin story is, so that's not really a spoiler. But, like, I'm expecting Iron Fist stuff to happen. If you have actually marathoned the entire series, one, you're a champ. But, two, please be careful about posting spoilers about that before I post those videos. So feel free to talk about anything from any of the episodes, but if you're talking about something from like way down the road that we haven't seen yet, just please use a spoiler tag. So just to catch everybody up on the character dynamics and like how everybody's related to each other. So Pop, Snap, Crackle, Pop, used to be called Pop because that's the sound that people made when he popped them with his fist. So he kind of used to be a cottonmouth type thug, got arrested, came back 10 years later, Cottonmouth was one of the people on his crew. Chico's father was the other dude who ended up dying in the streets. So he felt responsible for Chico since he tried to turn good. Cottonmouth obviously had continued to be bad, but still thought of Pop as like a big brother, father type figure. So he cared about Pop. That's why he was so pissed. So Pop is also the father of Luke Cage's dead wife, the one that Jessica Jones killed when she was under the influence of the Purple Man. So that's Reva. So when he's looking at the picture and he's talking about always moving forward, I'm ready, baby, he's looking at his dead wife's picture. That's how he's connected to Pop. He did, like, they actually did this really cool thing in, I think it was the second episode, where they kind of make you think, like, Pop could be Luke Cage's father. Now, he's not literally Luke Cage's father. He's Reva's father, but he became Luke Cage's father because they had that conversation about dads. And then Pop talks about his son, how he hasn't seen him since he was 13. I probably wouldn't even recognize him if he walked into my barbershop and asked for a haircut. But that's just them messing with your head a little bit. Just thematically, they're so good with their cinematography, especially the way they film all those misty night sequences where she's working out crimes in her head. So the way they film the series is just really cool, in addition to the series itself just being really cool. But the people are even more connected than that. So you know that Black Mariah is Cottonmouth's cousin. They're linked because she's trying to do kingpin-type stuff, clean up the community, but she's just crazy deluded about the methods she's using to do it. So Cottonmouth is the money that's funding all this, and she has this weird Jaron Hogarth thing going on where during Jessica Jones, Jaron Hogarth is this attorney who isn't really an evil character but kind of becomes one through her actions during the course of the series, and she's actually the attorney for Iron Fist's family, so I'm interested to see how Jaron Hogarth gets weaved into this. But Black Mariah is the same type of character, Alfre Woodard's character, where it's like she's so committed to helping her community, but just completely checks out on morality, just has absolutely brainwashed herself into believing that none of the terrible things that Cottonmouth is doing really matter. All that matters is her getting her name on the building, respect. That's all she cares about. She does not care where the money comes from. But then Cottonmouth, who's also trying to secure his legacy, loses the weapons and the shipment in the first episode, so he needs another backer, which is where Shades and Diamondback come in. So Shades was somebody who was in prison with Luke Cage. Like, Luke Cage said that he was framed for a crime that he didn't commit. That's how he ended up in Seagate prison with all these people. Diamondback, the person who is Shades' boss, is the person who framed him in the comics. So it's all connected. Like, all these characters, even though it doesn't seem that way, are more connected than you think. 
So a lot of the connections between the characters they build when they do the flashbacks. So pay attention to the flashbacks in the context they use them in. So let me know so far, what is your guys' favorite moment about the series? What did you think about their Daredevil style hallway fight in episode three? It was just like this Wu-Tang montage of Luke Cage wrecking the shit out of their crew. It was so much fun and I love that soundtrack. It was so Tarantino. It makes you wonder what Iron Fist is gonna be like. So what's gonna happen is, is I'll post my next Luke Cage video in another day or two. So most of my episode videos will post in this first week. And then once I finish with that, I'll do season two Heroes for Hire stuff. I'll do some Iron Fist. There is a new Iron Fist trailer that's going to drop at New York Comic Con next week. So of course I'll do a video for that. The timing is actually working out really well because most people will have seen all of Luke Cage and will be ready for Iron Fist by the time they do this Iron Fist New York Comic Con stuff. So get hype, it's gonna be awesome. And there is a new round of the Marvel giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. So what's gonna happen next is, there was a whole bunch of DC stuff that dropped in the last day or so that I'm still getting through. So I'm gonna do a Justice League Deathstroke video next. Then I'll do Flash season three. Then I'll do another Luke Cage episode video. So whole bunch of comic book stuff happening this weekend. Try to get Luke Cage in whenever you can. But do let me know if you guys actually make it through the entire series in a single sitting. Will you guys wait for that to post? You can click here for the Flash Superhero Fight Club trailer I posted yesterday. And you can click here for that Arrow trailer I just posted. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.